my god. Becky, look at her butt. The 90s may have given us Nirvana, but they also gave us many songs we'd rather forget. From Mambo No. 5 to Macarena, there's no shortage of cringy 90s songs. Which of these songs drives you up a wall? Let us know in the comments. Number 20, Won't There It Is, Tag Team. There are countless 90s hip hop songs examining complex topics like socioeconomic struggles and relationship difficulties. Then there's this song, which is pretty much just about being the best at having a good time. Tag team, back again. Check it directed, let's begin. Party on, party people, let me hear some noise. Well, There It Is by Atlanta duo Tag Team is a classic of Miami bass, but it's far more family friendly than your average two live crew song. Even nearly 30 years later, we cannot resist the thick rhythms of this song, nor screaming the hook at the top of our lungs. There it is, let me hear you say. Woo. Whoop, there it is, and we hope it never goes away. Number 19, Mbop, Hanson. Okay, so maybe it was kind of annoying when it was on the radio seemingly every hour of every day, but 25 years later, Mbop still holds up amazingly well. Band of Brothers Hanson's pop rock classic went number one in multiple countries, no doubt helped by a chorus that's catchy no matter what language you speak. However, despite the song's sunny demeanor, the lyrics are actually pretty deep if you pay attention. Isaac, Taylor, and Zach sing about how important it is to cherish our relationships. They might have been young, but these brothers were definitely wise. Number 18, Sex and Candy, Marcy Playground. Hanging around downtown by myself, and I had so much time. After the grunge explosion of the early 90s came the dawn of post grunge, bands that emulated Nirvana and Pearl Jam, but who tended to lean in a more melodic direction. While Sex and Candy is no Smells Like Teen Spirit, it still stands as a 90s alt-rock classic. I was thinking about myself and then there she was. Sure, it might be hard to take a song called Sex and Candy seriously, but Minneapolis's Marcy Playground keeps things chill. I smell sex and candy hair. Lead singer John Wozniak sounds like Kurt Cobain without quite as much angst and every strum of the guitar and hit of the drums feels cleansing. This song, it surely is a dream. Devious stares in my direction, mama this surely is a dream, yeah. Number 17, Rico Suave, Gerardo. You can probably name a dozen rappers each from New York, Los Angeles, or Atlanta. But how many do you know of that are from Ecuador? Suave. Gerardo helped bring Latin hip hop to prominence with this jam about a man who's not shy about his success with the ladies. Although he might be bragging, he's so charismatic about it we don't mind. Gerardo became so associated with this song, we sometimes forget his stage name isn't actually Rico Suave. Rico. Suave. Latin rappers have done some amazing things over the decades, and Gerardo deserves our respect for helping bring more diversity to the genre. Number 16, Jump, Criss Cross. There are two things we will forever remember Criss Cross for. Their fondness for backwards clothes and their chart-topping hit, Jump. Despite both being 13 when the single dropped, rappers Mac Daddy and Daddy Mac were not kidding around. And neither was Jermaine Dupri, who provided the song's hard-hitting but still danceable beat. Sampling classic artists like the Jackson 5 and James Brown, Jump kept things fresh even by looking to the past. And while it might be old school, it's still as enjoyable now as it was then. If there's any song that demands you get moving, it's Jump. Number 15, One of Us, Joan Osborne. Usually, songs about God are heard in church, not on Top 40 radio. But American singer Joan Osborne brought the charts to the light with One of Us. 
In this top five hit, Osborne speculates about a world in which God was indistinguishable from any average mortal. If God had a name, what would it be and would you call it to his face? Some might take offense to God being likened to a slob like one of us, and the message is completely unsubtle. But this song still gave us something to think about, which we can't say for all the songs on this list. And what if God was one of us? Just a slob like one of us. Heaven help us, we still love this song. Number 14, Informer, Snow. We got snow in August. That was the month Canadian reggae artist Snow dropped Informer, a hit bigger than his glasses in the song's video. Mixing reggae and hip-hop, Informer is a song decrying snitches. But we had to hear it a few dozen times before we could start to parse what Snow was saying. Despite the song's party-ready and fairly ridiculous sound, it actually has some pretty serious origins. Snow wrote the song while incarcerated, before he had any kind of musical career. Who knew a licky boom boom down had such personal meaning? Number 13, Mr. Vane, Culture Beat. If you attended a dance party in the 90s, the question wasn't if they would play Mr. Vane, but when. This hit from German group Culture Beat had everything for a house anthem. A steady kick drum pulse, an energetic synth melody, and gorgeous vocals, courtesy of vocalist Tanya Evans. And if things weren't already poppin', member Jay Supreme comes through with a great rap verse. <laughs> Mr. Vane has no time to slow down, throwing everything at you at once and then some. Even if we're not at the club, we feel obligated to dance whenever it's on. Number 12, Steal My Sunshine, Len. There are plenty of reasons to look forward to summer, including an excuse to listen to Steal My Sunshine. I was lying on the grass a Sunday morning of last week. While this hit from Canadian band Len is great any time of year, it's perfect for a hot day. With its sunny lyrics and beat, it's as infectious as a 90s song can get, especially with its sampling of Andrea True Connection's disco classic More More More. The vocal contrast between raspy Mark Costanzo and his sister Sharon's sweeter vocals is another highlight. I know it's up for me. Making sure I'm not in too deep. We're gonna put this song on L-A-T-E-R this week, or just right now. Number 11, Cotton Eye Joe, Rednecks. Need any further proof that the 90s was one of the weirdest decades of all time? Rednecks, a Swedish dance group, released a techno version of a pre-Civil War American folk song and it became an international sensation. We wouldn't think to mix fiddles and banjos with pulsating club beats, but Rednecks' approach somehow proved irresistible, even if we might be embarrassed to admit it now. Where did this song come from? Clearly, some very creative minds. Where did it go? If we're being honest, it'll probably always be a part of us. Number 10, We Like to Party, The Vanga Bus, Vanga Boys. Another Euro dance group that took the world by storm, at least for a moment, was Vanga Boys. The Dutch group had a few hits to their name, but none permeated our collective consciousness quite like We Like to Party. Its pro-celebration message is timeless, but the most enduring aspect of this song is its over-the-top synth melody. You know the one. Trying to get this song out of your head is like trying to get sand out of your shoes after a day at the beach. The Venga Bus was coming, and we just had to get on. Number 9, Blue Dabba Dee, Eiffel 65. Yo, listen up, here's the story about an Italian dance song that was everywhere in the late 90s. 
Blue is about a guy in a world where everything is blue, including himself. Blue his house with a blue little window and a blue Corvette and everything is blue for him. That's not exactly what you would expect to be the subject of a club banger, but Eiffel 65's knack for catchy hooks and melodies made us all think blue. In a good way. I'm a and she is so blue. The chorus might have been mostly nonsensical, but who says things need to make sense to be good? We do have to say that the music video still creeps us out a little, though. Number 8. What is love? Hadaway. There are some questions that will likely never be answered, including the one at the center of this dance hit by Hadaway. What is love? It's not clear if Hathaway is actually asking what love is or if he's just speaking rhetorically. But what is clear is how this song became such a big hit, with its thick grooves, classic hook, and backing vocals. Its music video, featuring Hathaway being pursued by a trio of women, including a vampire, is also classic. We don't know what love is, but we know we love this song. Number 7. Tub Thumping, Chumbawamba While English band Chumbawamba started out as a politically-minded punk band, their biggest hit was more suited for dancing than moshing. In its own, more accessible way, Tub Thumping can be seen as a political song. The lyrics are about standing up in the face of adversity, after all. And we are always in the mood to sing along to the chorus, especially if we've had a bad day. Chumbawamba's message resonated with many, as tub thumping topped the charts in multiple countries. This is a song that reminds us of both the good times and the better times. Number 6. Barbie Girl, Aqua. Hiya, Bobby. Hi, Ken. You wanna go for a ride? Sure, Ken. Jump in. Many sweet childhood memories involve Barbie dolls. But this song from Danish pop group Aqua isn't quite so innocent. In Barbie Girl, member Lena Nystrom likens herself to the famous doll, with fellow member Renee Ziff as her Ken. And what they talk about isn't exactly G rated. Mattel sued label MCA Records for trademark violation and alleged negative effects on Barbie's image. You can touch case was thrown out, and Mattel later ended up making a music video with a new version of the song. Of course, certain lines like the one about Hanky Panky were taken out. Number 5. Mambo Number 5. A Little Bit Of. Lou Bega. If your name is Monica, Erica, or any of the other names mentioned in Mambo Number no. 5, we understand you might have mixed feelings about this song. One, two, three, four, five, everybody in the car, so come on, let's ride. But in terms of delightful 90s cheese, Mambo Number no. 5 is a 10. Building off an instrumental from Cuban artist Damaso Perez Prado, first released in 1950, Mambo number no. 5 is shamelessly corny and endlessly fun. A little bit of Monica in my life, a little bit of Erica by my side. Bega sounds like he's having the time of his life, even breaking out into laughter. We don't need to listen to this song often, but a little bit always does the trick. You can't run, you can't hide, you and me gonna touch the sky. Number 4. Baby Got Back, Sir Mix a Lot. There have been plenty of popular songs about butts over the years, but none have proved quite as enduring as this classic from Sir Mix-a-Lot. I like big butts and I cannot lie. You other brothers can't deny. 
Pretty much every part of the song is legendary by now, from its opening dialogue between two valley girls to the bass-boosted beat, to the song's iconic opening lines, as well as other lyrics. So fellas, yeah, fellas, yeah, your girlfriend got the butt, Hell yeah. shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it, shake, it. shake, it. shake that healthy butt. And even though it's fairly raunchy, how can you not love a song that promotes body positivity the way this one does? Baby Got Back is still a classic, and there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Dial 1900 mix a lot and kick them nasty thoughts. Baby got back. <laughs> Number three, Ice Ice Baby, Vanilla Ice. As embarrassing as it might be to admit now, Ice Ice Baby was how many of us were first introduced to hip hop. All right, stop, collaborate, and listen. Ice is back with my brand new invention. But as cheesy as this song is, it's also a part of history, as it was the first hip hop song to hit number one in the US. The under pressure sampling beat is obviously iconic. Check out the hook while my DJ revolves it. But credit must also be given to Mr. Ice himself, who's so confident in his delivery, we can't help but like him. He might not have the cred of Tupac or Eminem, but for a minute, this self described lyrical poet was our favorite rapper. Yo, man, let's get out of here. Word to your mother. Number two, I'm Too Sexy, Right Said Fred. At first, I'm Too Sexy seems rather arrogant. After all, isn't it a song about a guy bragging about how physically attractive he is? I'm too sexy for my shirt, too sexy for my shirt, so sexy it hurts. While technically that is true, the song is more about mocking vanity, especially in the fashion industry. It's also an absurdly fun song, with its groovy beat and deep vocals, which one reviewer likened to Elmer Fudd on steroids. I'm Too Sexy tops the charts in various countries. I'm a model, you know what I mean, and I do my little turn on the catwalk. And its influence continues to this day. In 2021, Drake scored another number one with the Right Said Fred sampling Way Too Sexy. I'm too sexy for the trap, too sexy for that cat, too sexy for that jack, yeah, yeah. The 90s will always be with us. Number one, Macarena, Bayside Boys Mix, Los Del Rio. If you were around in the 90s, it might have seemed like Macarena and its accompanying dance came out of nowhere, but it actually took a few years for it to become a sensation. Latin pop duo Los Del Rio first released the song in 1993. Then in 1995, the Bayside Boys remixed the song, making it both more danceable and bilingual with the addition of English lyrics. A year later, it became the hit we all know and, yes, love. I am not trying to seduce you. Topping the US charts for 14 consecutive weeks, Macarena was a song you couldn't avoid unless you lived in a cave in Antarctica. And even then it wasn't guaranteed. But we love it and the dance all the same. Hooray Macarena! Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.